Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. And by the way, I just want to thank everybody who viewed my video the other day. I got a bunch of new subscribers and a bunch of likes on the video and some really good comments on the uh, Topaz users groups on Facebook. And I really want to thank everybody for that. I really appreciate your support. And I just want to do my best just to, to help the community and show you some different things about these products. Okay. All right. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. And thanks for all the kind words and the likes and all the, and the subscriptions. Thank you again. All right. So let's get started. Today, guys, we're going to uh, look at the uh, basic adjustment filter inside of Topaz Studio 2. Um, eventually, I'm eventually, I'm going to get into workflows and different things. And I just want to point this out. Topaz Studio 2 can be used right from Lightroom. It can be used as a plugin in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. Or it can be used as a standalone product where you can use it as a raw converter and do all your adjustments right from Studio 2. So Studio 2 is a powerful, powerful piece of software. And I thank you, uh, Topaz, for letting it be so powerful. And, you know, it's really awesome. Okay, so we're going to use Lightroom today. Now, basically, you'll notice all my adjustments here are set at the center detent point. So basically, I have no adjustments on here. I'm going to go into this detail module here. So let's give that a click. And you'll notice right now, I have the default setting uh, from Lightroom, which is 25 on the sharpening. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, and the radius is there at 1. So I'm just leaving the defaults there. Noise reduction. Lightroom defaults at zero noise reduction, so we're not applying noise reduction. But they do give you a 25 in color noise. And I leave these guys, and I find they work fine. So just leave them alone, okay? That's my opinion. Because when you go into uh, Topaz Studio 2, first thing you're going to do is run the very fantastic filter called AI Clear. And we're going to do that first. And then we're, gonna, then we're going to get into the basic adjustments. So let's right-click our image and go to Edit In. And we want to find Studio 2. Give that a click. Uh, my file format is set at TIFF. That's what I recommend. You can set it for different file formats, PSD or JPEG. But I like TIFF. It's a higher resolution. Uh, color Space Pro Photo. That's the largest color space. I like to use it. Pro Photo RGB. Bit Depth of 16, which is a higher resolution bit depth. And my resolution is 360. Now, the reason I have mine at 360 is because I have an Epson printer, and Epson printers like 360 on the resolution. If you don't have an Epson printer, you might use 300 or 240, depending on your printer. Okay. In compression, I leave that at none. And now we'll just click edit. In a second or two, we'll see the beautiful little parrot pop up. The happy little parrot greets us. They'll probably change that at some point to a different nice image. Okay. But right now, the parrot is with us, and I love the parrot. So here we go, guys. We're in Studio 2. So the first thing we want to do is come up to the upper right-hand corner of the interface here and click on Add Filter. First thing we want to do is click AI Clear. Automatically, like magic, guys. This is basically what I do here, guys. Run it, and it's generally good. If it looks fine, I don't touch it. If it doesn't, I might start tweaking these things. And I explained this stuff yesterday. But let's just zoom in to the image here. And I'm going to click the hand tool here with left click of the mouse. And there's before and after, before and after. So you can see it did a really good job. And let's just zoom back out here. All right. So that's it. AI clear. So the next thing we're going to do is go and show you how the basic adjustment works. So let's click add filter and click on the second adjustment, basic adjustment. All right, so basic adjustment. So now you'll notice every one of these filters, guys, at the top of the filter will have an opacity slider. So you can adjust the amount of the filter. After you've adjusted all these, you know, these different settings inside of any filter, you can adjust the opacity. You can say, you know what, that's a little bit strong handed. I might want to ease that off a little bit or leave it up at full strength. So the opacity slider is very important. You'll be using that, believe me. Uh, for now, basic adjustment, we're going to leave that at full strength. And then you have blend modes, okay? And I love Topaz blend modes because when you click this, uh, you'll see all the different blend modes. But notice when you hover over blend modes, you see the actual effect take place on your image. And that is really cool, guys. Topaz is, have been doing this for a very long time. Other companies are finally catching up to Topaz. But, for instance, Photoshop has not allowed you to hover over blend modes and see a change till maybe a couple 
updates ago, but for the longest time we didn't have that. So Topaz has been with us for a long time, so that's cool. In this case, guys, we normally in a starting out in the basic adjustment, you're going to leave that on normal, okay? But I just wanted to point that out. We'll be getting be getting into the blend modes in other episodes, okay? And then you have apply preset. Every one of your adjustments are going to have an apply preset. So it's a drop down. So you give this a click and you see you have all these different presets in here, for instance. And these come baked in with uh, with Topaz Studio too. Let's take one, for instance. Um, let's do saturation boost. Let's give that a click. And as you can see, it's uh, boosted up the saturation a little bit up to a 0.40 here. Uh, it adjusted the shadows a little bit. It adjusted the highlights a little bit. So that's a preset, okay? And you have all the different presets. Oh, and by the way, see right here, it says basic adjustment, that little uh, circle with a little arrowhead on it. If you give that a click, that will reset it. And you notice you get, it also tells you reset this effect in its mask. Okay, so give it a click and we reset it back to the default settings, which is really cool. Here we have a auto white balance setting, so you can turn that on. And if you like what that looks like, your white balance is set. I'm going to turn it off so I can show you how to do it uh, manually. Let's go to the bottom here where it says uh, temperature and tint. This is for your white balance, guys. Now, you can take the temperature slider, move it to the right, and warm up your image or move it to the left, cool your image down, double click temperature and you set that de set that center detent right back. Same with the tint, you can move this to the right, add a little more magenta to your image or move it to the left, add more green to the image. Again, double click the tint and you get it right back to where you wanted it. Or you have this eyedropper tool here. If you knew something in your image that was a neutral, uh, a neutral color, meaning like really not color in it, right? Like a gray or a white or a black. Gray is probably the best to find. But in this case, guys, I don't have anything gray. But if I did, like for instance, what if I was taking a picture of um, a landscape with in a fall scene with a nice, um, and we've got all that fall color in there, but we have a nice country gray road running through the scene, okay? So I could click this eyedropper tool, click on the gray road, and voila, I got perfect white balance, okay? And then after I've done that, I can make a few further adjustments. Say like if I wanted to warm, a few further adjustments, so like I wanted to warm it up a little bit, I could move this temperature to the right, or give myself a little more green tint, I can move this to the left a little bit. So we can kind of like play with it after that or just accept it just the way it is just wanted to point that out to you but for now let's um i'm gonna hit this auto white balance because i thought that looked pretty good but you notice right here guys it looks a, i'm seeing a little bit of a green tint here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down to my tint i'm going to click on the center detent now i'm not going to drag my mouse here i'm going to give you a nice little tip here all these sliders if you click on a slider you can move your up and down arrows and nudge these uh, controls, which is kind of the way I like to do it. So I want to nudge it to the right away from the green. I'm watching that that highlighted area. And basically what I do is I want to get rid of that bit of a green tint that's in there. I'm going to keep moving that just to where I think it looks right. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe right about there looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that right there because I felt that looked a little bit green in there. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do is come up here after we've, and this is typically the way I work, guys. I normally work with my, um, with my temperature first, my white balance. The second thing I like to do is adjust my black level and my white level. To do that, let's go to the histogram here. Let's turn our histogram on. Now, generally the way I do it, and I'll show you different ways of doing it, is I'll take the black level and I'll move it maybe to the right and I'll watch this histogram. See the edge of this histogram? What I want to do is take this edge and slide it right to the left side of this histogram right here. Okay, so watch. I'll take that black level and I'll move it just till it touches the edge. And to me, that sets my black point pretty accurately right there okay and then I'll then I'll do the same with a white level I'll take the white level I'll start off I maybe move it to the right and see the edge of my histogram and then I'll just bump that up just till I touch the right side there right there and I, that's a really good way of setting your white and black point and then you can look at highlight highlighted areas like here if I feel that's maybe a little too hot there I might just come here click on that white level and hit my down arrow a couple times and just ease off on that white level a little bit. And really, guys, you want to adjust these controls to your taste, to what your eye likes. 
okay so right there so that's my starting point so i did my temperature i set my white and black points okay now i'm going to go to the exposure and just look at the image do i feel like feel like i need a little exposure i think i need a little exposure so i'm just going to bump that exposure up just a little bit maybe somewhere right around there now clarity if i move this clarity control to the right i'm going to add clarity to the image and you can go way far to the right guys and make that image look ugly or way to the left and make it look really soft okay here's a little tip first i'm going to double click clarity to set it back to zero when I'm making my basic adjustments, I will use very minimal clarity. Sometimes I might bump it up just a little bit. But at other times, I will come to that basic adjustment. If I just want to add some clarity to a certain part of the image, I'll grab another basic adjustment filter. Man, you could have 10 basic adjustment filters up here. It doesn't really matter. But I might use a basic adjustment filter just to uh, bring up some clarity, maybe in a couple of the petals on the flower here, right? And so... I'll get another adjustment, uh, basic adjustment up and just jack up the clarity and then I'll use the masking tool and mask it in. Oh, by the way, on your adjustments up here, guys, you'll find your masking tools are in here. I don't really need it here because I'm making a basic adjustment. In further videos, we're gonna get into that in depth. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about masking, okay? And then we have a little trash can. So if we said, ah, I don't like this adjustment, I don't think I need it, we can hit the trash can and get rid of the adjustment. And then we have the eyeball. We can see the uh, effect before and after with the eyeball, which is beautiful. Okay, so we got the exposure set. So again, the clarity, I'm just gonna leave it in the center right there. And one other thing I wanna point out with Topaz, their controls give you a lot of latitude, a lot of range, a lot more range than a lot of other software companies give you. And I like that, and I thank you Topaz for doing that, because they let us as the artist make the decision, where do we want our adjustment to go? And they give us the range to work with, and that is a really good thing that not too many companies let you do. They put training wheels in their controls, but Topaz, they say, you guys, you can do it. Okay, and I like that about Topaz. Okay, now the shadow, we can open up our shadow tones, like these areas under here in the flower here are shadow tones. If I wanted to open those up a little bit, I can take that and move that shadow to the right and open up the shadows. Or if I want those areas to go darker for artistic purposes, I can. So however I want it, guys, I can just drag it in there. And once I get to a point that I kind of like, then I can just use my up and down arrow and just, just tweak it in just to nudge it right to the right spot. So don't forget that. Use your up and down arrows. Use the sliders to get you close and then use your up and down arrows. And also, do not be afraid to move sliders on any piece of software that you're using. The only way you're really gonna learn what software does is by really moving those sliders and really seeing what those sliders do. Let's go to highlights. So if I wanna ease off in these highlights here a little bit, watch, I can take this highlight slider. Let's move it the whole way to the left. And look what it did, man. It turned those highlights gray. This is what I'm telling you about Topaz. They give you all this range, guys. Or if I move this highlight to the right, I can blow those highlights out to bright white. Most, most software will not let you do that. So let's double click highlights. Now I'm just gonna take this and move this a little bit to the left, just to where that eases up on that. Maybe somewhere right around there, and then I'm just gonna take my up and down arrow and just get that just to where I think it should be, right around there. Now let's go up to the eyeball up here, guys, and see the before and after. So here's the adjustment. Now let's click the eyeball. There, that's pre-adjustment. Let's click it, and that's after the adjustment. And the other thing I could have done, guys, is remember I could have just clicked in the center of the image and see the before and after that way too. So we can go either way. But you might have a bunch of layers here. What if you had 15 layers here and one particular uh, layer that you had here, you wanted to see, what's it like if I shut just that layer off? Well, then you just come to the eyeball of that particular layer and click it off and see the difference there, right? And then you might have to say, click that adjustment layer on and say, you know what, I need to ease off in the opacity there. It's just a little bit strong. So really cool. But that's basically it, guys. Again, I'm just going over all the filters so you get an idea how they work and what they do. So well, there it is, guys. And we're done here. So the only thing we need to do is click accept. That'll run us back into Lightroom. Okay. We're back in Lightroom. And sometimes in Lightroom, I'll get this where it's gray. I don't see anything here. So I'll click to the image to the right of it and then back to it. It's just a little bug in Lightroom. And here I had this 
I, every now and then I get this little arrow here with the, with the lines, and I explained that yesterday, guys. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does. It's a bug in Lightroom. It's not Topaz. So what I do is I just give that a click and go to Import Settings from Disk, and there my picture's changed. Okay, so let's, the image right to the next of it, it on the right is the original image, and here, the one on the left, I'll click it. This is the Topaz image. Okay, so here's the before, and here's the after. Okay, so there it is. So, again, just a basic adjustment on that, guys. Well, I hope you liked this one today, guys. If you liked it, please give it a like. Uh, give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click the bell notification icon. Share this video with your friends. I really appreciate your support, guys. Thanks for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you guys next time.